Do I hear wedding bells? I do, I do. <laughs> Making gifts for traditional brides coming up next. Don't go away. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Bernina of America. Nothing sews like a Bernina. Nothing. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. American Professional Quilting Systems, hand-guided elegance. The American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Paducah, McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Paducah, where no one is a stranger. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central. Celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts, Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. One occasion that gives you plenty of opportunities to make a quilt is when there's a wedding. You can make it for the announcement of the engagement, even be as a wedding gift. And we're going to show you a quilt today that I think would be perfect for any one of those occasions. Let's take a look at the quilt. It's called From the Garden View. And you can see it has a wonderful basket of flowers in the center. And you're seeing the beautiful bordered edges and lots of little flowers. And notice the center of each of those flowers has a button that we've used there. Flushment on the piece. So now let's take a look and I'm the first thing that I like to do is audition the fabrics that we're going to use. So many of the manufacturers today create coordinated groups and it's easy to go into the store and find those placed together where you can kind of look at one or two fabrics. And we've selected this beautiful range of fabrics that happens to be called Garden View. You'll notice there are lights, darks, there are medium sized florals, smaller florals, and the main feature fabric was the large black one which we selected and that's a fairly large floral print. So this one we decided would be used for the border. So that sort of began to create the foundation. The nice thing about this line is that it also had another one of the same fabric in a different color combination so we could use that as one of the inner borders. So it's nice to see how the fabrics work together they blend and the colors are not always exact, but they're designed to make beautiful quilts once they work together. So once we've decided that, the only other things that we needed were our buttons and we used the six strand uh, cotton embroidery floss, which we're going to do some embellishment on. To get started, we're going to begin with the first inner border, which is the checkerboard border. We cut our strips two and a half inches by the length of the fabric from selvage to selvage. I then stitch them together and you'll notice I use the two greens on this side with the pink in the center. You'll notice on this one I pressed all of my seams going towards the center area. I then made another strip of two and a half inch strips and I stitch them with the pink on the outside this time and the green on the inside. And when I press these, I press them to the outside. Now I'm gonna put those together so that you can see. This series are pressed out, this series are pressed in. So when I go back and begin forming my checkerboards, which I'll show you how that's done, I take one strip with the green outer borders, I place a strip with the pink outer borders on top of it and when I sew that together I'm going to eliminate as much bulk as I can in there because you can see this one the back one is going in this direction and the top one is going there so I've essentially created a nice flat seam and when you sew that together and turn it over this is what happens. You eliminate most of the bulk that could occur where all of those seams are joining together. And this is important to remember. You know, oftentimes you get so involved in the piecing and the patchwork, you forget that what really enhances the beauty of a quilt 
is when you take the time to carefully press. We've cut them accurately, we have to press them accurately. So I would continue to make my strips to create those outer borders. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the center section area. Now you'll notice this top portion of the green background has only the applique sections on it. And coming down here, we're going to have to strip that to fit the piecing. To do the inner basket area, we begin again with that same two and a half inch strip. What we do here is we take that, cutting the strip at two and a half inches, and I'm going to take my rotary cutter, cut a square, that's two and a half inches. Get this exactly here, line up your ruler to the half inch mark, cut that. And then what I do after I finish that is I then cut them on the diagonal. So I take that and merely cutting from point to point, I would cut all of the pieces that are necessary to do the piecing for the basket. So I'm beginning with the triangles and when I put them together, I will have a look like this. So that's really how you do the pieces that create these sections here of the basket. And then you fill in triangle as you move down. So you're creating this strip, this strip, and then this strip. And then that is pieced together with the background areas of the basket. The next thing we're going to do is create the appliques. I like to use a fusible paper that leaves a web. And I have placed this onto my fabric that's going to be one of the leaves. I will cut around that and we do that very carefully on the lines. And when you're doing the applique with your machine embroidery in the buttonhole stitch or whether you're using your hand embroidery, and I'm going to show you how we've done both, it doesn't matter if these are a little bit off to the line because they will come out looking just great once you do that. To tear off the paper, I like to take a piece of the pin, crack it open, and that enables you to get that off very carefully. For so many years, I kept trying to get my fingernails in there, and it was really difficult to get that paper backing off. And this leaves a smooth surface that's ready to be pressed. So I'll take this off, and I will turn my board over. And now we're ready to add those embellishments. I take my piece, and I've created one of the roses, and I've set that. And now I'm going to take the iron and I'm going to press that into position. And you just need to put some pressure on that with the hot iron and that will place that down. Then I will do the little leaf that's going to come down here. We can put that coming in that direction and I'll place that on there as well. You'll notice that I did select because they have a slightly darker hue to them and they have a what, somewhat of a mottled look to them, so they give a nice feeling. They don't read as a total solid, but yet they give you that darkness and the solid feel as you go. Once you get everything in place, the next step is to determine how you're going to stitch it. We've done two different types of stitching and I'm going to show you. This section here has been done by machine doing the blanket stitch. And you can see we've done that on most of the leaves. Now in the flower area, we wanted to have a little more emphasis, so we decided we would do that by hand to show you the uh, different ways that you can do it. This is a blanket stitch, and as I said earlier, we used our cotton, our six strand cotton floss. I have taken it and I am using three strands of that cotton floss. And to do your blanket stitch, you merely hold your thread along the line of the applique, come down and space it accordingly, and then the needle comes up between the applique edge and the thread. So I'm bringing that up like this, and I pull it, and then I take it to the next one, and you're ready to do the next stitch on that. Once you have completed all of the center area, the next thing to do is decide on your borders. And once again, we do this in a sort of auditioning way. You determine how they're going to be, and look at the quilt. You can see we have our large checkerboard border around the center area, and then we have our side borders. And those are the ones that we're going to determine. So I'm gonna show you how we did this. We determined that we would use these inch and a half borders in between this three inch border here. So we've placed those on the either side of the lighter print of our background fabric. So that's how the border sequencing went and it created a very nice framing for this design. 
You can have as many borders as you want. Whatever you feel gives that quilt the best look. Then to bind it off, I like to take my fabric and I fold it in half and I use the two and a half inch, fold it in half, place it on there, stitch my right sides and roll it to the back, machine stitch along the edge and that gives you a perfect finish for that perfect quilt. Weddings have traditionally some prince unites with a beautiful princess and she's wearing an exquisite gown, which she had a hand in making, of course. Attended by their lords and ladies-in-waiting, promenading upon the grounds of their private estate. Well, fairy tales do come true for that special day. Friends and families come together to make it so memorable. The setting for a wedding is one of the most important elements of the entire event. An atmosphere that combines natural beauty with family amenities has just the right balance of fantasy and fun. Historic log buildings lend an old-fashioned air to the festivities. Quaint architecture and exuberant gardens create all sorts of photographic niches. A gazebo is the perfect space to hold the sacred ceremony and one that is large enough to shelter and dine your guests does double duty. A more intimate chapel is good for a private wedding. Couples can take a romantic stroll down the beautifully landscaped grounds. The ladies in the party may be interested in shopping, all the while on a veritable treasure hunt, looking at all the antique quilts scattered throughout the buildings. Kids of all ages that are bored with all the smiling and crying adults may like to try a round of miniature golf, play with all the bells and whistles on the playground, or talk with the cute animals in the petting zoo. All of that activity makes for hungry wedding guests, and incredible food satisfies that need. Catering can provide an elegant gourmet meal, a more authentic regional cuisine, or almost anything the happy couple desires real home-style cooking, the type that is virtually history today. A romantic yet fun setting for the whole family can provide beautiful memories for that most important wedding day. Today we have Marilyn Badger with us and she has a new lace thread applique method. It seems to be sweeping the country. I would love to have her show it to you. Hi Marilyn. Hi Jay, nice what, to be here. What have you brought uh, with you I've, today? We're going to do some fun applique. It's really easy and quick on the long arm and uh, it's, it's a nice thing to do for lace, the lacy look on garments or quilts, purses, hats, whatever. Uh, and the, the nice thing about it is, is we're going to stitch it on this ultra salvi, which is a heavier weight. Uh, so your needle will stitch through it fine and, and with no problem. Uh, and I have drawn a design here, and actually I've worked several here so you can see the different threads. Uh, this is basically a quilt pattern that's called Just Beachy, and so instead of fabric, we're going to do it with thread. Oh, they're just beautiful. And uh, all we do is we, we've, we've got it marked on here, and I'm just going to outline it. And the nice thing about this is you don't have to be that precise about following these lines that perfectly. It's just an outline to stitch, and then we're going to fill it in with thread. So I'm going to use my stitch regulator. That's that ding-dong you're hearing. And then I'll hit one here. And I'm just going to go around this design just staying as close as I can. I just want to be relaxed and not worry about it it's too nice, much. nice smooth swing and yeah, don't worry too much about it's kind of an irregular shape anyway. Yeah, the salvi's going to dissolve so it doesn't matter whether we're right on it or not. And then the needle, needle never punches enough holes so it drops the piece out. This salvi holds not together. Not at all, not at all. So when we're going to get up around in here now, see how I'm getting tangled up in those threads, so I can just stop the machine and move those out of the way so that I don't have to worry about them, and it will still stitch when I start moving. Okay, so now when I come back around here, when you're doing this work, you want to do it in grid fashion. So I want to just come down like straight to each one of those outlines that I quilted and go back and forth. I was back wondering how you would keep it from coming all apart once you wash the salvi out. As long as you stitch it in a grid like that. Now, once I've gone up and down, I want to come back across. 
and that will connect all the way to that outside edge, which will keep it into its shape. Right. Now, once I've done that grid work like that, I come back in and I just kind of go around and around and around and just make it look like lace. And with the variegated threads, you'll get different colors in different areas. So just quilt around and around. Now, when I get over here, I want to do my grids again. And I want to come back in to where that previous grid was so that they're interconnected. So we're just going to go back and forth, get that in, and then we're going to go around and around. Now, once that's all filled in with stitching, then you dissolve the solve, and you'll get an applique shape kind of like this. Now, do you this use different design, warm water or cold hot water? water. Uh -huh. Hot water. And you can see it's still a little stiff, and you can rinse it again. Then we can put those on a quilt top, like right here. I have appliqued these on. And the red one here, you can see I've uh, stitched in, changed my threads in there and, and stitched up some vines up through it. And then when I appliqued it on, I trimmed it with a, um, some... A little couching thread. Couching, right. This get, is get much softer than if you actually sewed through the quilt because both the bobbin thread and the top thread are on the top and it's not going all the way through and you're not and you're using half as much thread really or right, right. I mean it's all on the top you're not losing any on the back so your quilt doesn't become as stiff right and when you do that kind of stiff that that close stitching on a quilt top it draws it up so it gets distorted and it's tough to make it square when you quilt it oh. so this eliminates all of that that is really a good idea so this is just with the appliques on the quilt top and then this is a, a case where I quilted the quilt and it needed something else so I made the stars out of this on the salvi and just appliqued them on there after the quilting was done so I so. just added the finishing touch and you can't mess up with it. If you don't get your threads interconnected enough, then you just put it back on some salve and stitch some more and dissolve it again. So right. it's really great, fun stuff. You can't mess up. I would think, too. And then if you had any knots, they're all hidden because That's right. it's not really sewn all the way through except it's top stitched on. And you don't have to worry about mm -hmm. your tension. If you get little gobbledy goops on the back, it doesn't yeah. matter. And if you're <laughs> actually sleeping under it, it's, it's much softer. Mm -hmm. If you want to change the color of the room later, you can add another color and you didn't have to go all the way back to the patchwork. Right. That's a great idea. So you can start out and make a project uh, with it planned in mind or you can end up with a project that needed something else and you can add it to it. So uh, that's really a lot of fun. Well, this is really beautiful and we see this as just another thing where we are bridging the gap from the quilt world to the thread artist. So thank you so much for coming today. You're welcome. It was a pleasure, Jane. My guest today is also the designer that made the quilt I did earlier for the wedding gift. Joining me is Marinda Stewart. Welcome, Marinda. Hi, Donna. It's good to see you. We haven't worked together for quite a while. Well, I'm glad to have you back on, and we're me going too. to be making a wedding bag today. Yes, we are. This was inspired by the traditional Victorian crazy quilts that have always been encrusted with needlework and beads and any other thing that you could lay your hands on. And uh, those of us that love embellishment go there right off the bat for inspiration. So that's where the inspiration came from. Well, I love all that you've done on this. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, we have classic traditional silk buttonhole twist mm -hmm. embroidery work. We have beads added to it to give extra texture. And then I've done actual very traditional beadwork in the uh, dangles and tassels mm -hmm. with the uh, wonderful shaped pearls. The flower is delightful. That I was really pleased with. That was totally an experiment. That's a traditional Victorian technique as well of making beaded flowers. There are a couple of different ways of doing it. That one's a lacing way where you oh. start with the wire, thread the beads on, and then for the next row you slide your more beads on and you crisscross the wires between the two of them. So it's laced almost like a ladder. Great. And well, make your petals. Let's see how you let's did get the bag. To, let's get to the meat of the issue. Um, for the shape, I also went vintage. This is an antique bag. You can see poor little babies in, in some sorry shape. <laughs> but the shape was wonderful, and when you pull the drawstring, you get these wonderful petals. So I used that as, as my source of inspiration. Okay. I took a pattern off of it. Uh, directly. First mm -hmm. pattern was too short, so I lengthened it a little okay. bit because when the petals fall over, it covered up all the all the rest of the bag. So, Next, with crazy quilting, you don't have uh, batting, as right. you know. You work on a foundation. Mm -hmm. Cut a foundation from muslin and started with my, bead, with my patchwork. 
I picked my palette. Your palette is fabulous. Well, it's a wedding, so it's yes. soft and pastel, pinks and creams and lavenders. That would make a beautiful quilt, too. It would. It would. In fact, I think I did one for you did a long you? time ago in, in wonderful pastels. Um, anyway, we did that. And as I do my crazy quilting, I like to insert as much texture and lace right. I can with the sewing machine. Good. To cut to get the encrustation, and then I can bead on top of it. Good. So when I was done, I trimmed away all the excess down to just my bag shape, and mm -hmm. then I'm ready to start with the beadwork. Um, the embroidery is always in traditional crazy quilting was almost always done with silk thread. Uh huh. So this is silk buttonhole twist, and it's called buttonhole twist because that's what it was originally uh, designed to be used for, was to do hand-worked buttonholes. Mm. And because it's silk and highly twisted, it, it just glides through your fabric. Oh, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. And you do your embellishment stitches, and then you come back and you add your beads where you want to. Great. Well, you did some great flowers here, and you have some over there on the table. Uh, the vintage flowers um, are, these are the ones that were my source of inspiration. These are my contemporary ones. I made the twisted cord and the tassel. Here's the twisted cord for the bag. And I even uh, did a small sample trying to do it with, I threaded beads onto one of the strands of silk before I made the twisted cord. Now, you did do tassels on the bottom of the mm -hmm. bag. Mm -hmm. That's done with the silk buttonhole twist, classic tassel. But the tassels are so popular right now and used in home deck, I've used their regular sewing thread, their uh -huh. silk sewing thread, and I've made decorator tassels for and tie backs on curtains or um, drawer pulls on a key in an antique chest or whatever you want to use them for. Oh, that's great. And the ones Pulls you did that are on the wall display look mm -hmm. wonderful. Now, you brought several other bags that have beading and all sorts of things going on. Well, one of them is, uh, is very Victorian. The pink one is very Victorian, encrusted with ribbons and beads. The other two have a Victorian feel, but they're, simil but they're not as elaborately constructed. They're done uh, basically out of bits and pieces of ribbon. And this little yellow That's one. That's another vintage one. It was hand crocheted and then uh, decorated with more vintage beads. Good. Well, the pillow has bumblebees swirling around. Yes. Is that? Yes, that's that's ultimately a house gift for a friend who's going to redo her bedroom in bees. She's going right. to be the queen bee. Well, I think the best piece is that neck piece that you created all over there. It's That's very beautiful. contemporary, and that was a lot of fun. That uses the, the uh, wire, yes. and it's knitted oh. with knitting needles. You Amazing. The, you, <laughs> you always the beads on the wire, and then you knit with it. It's, it's hard on your hands, but it's worth it for the result. Well, thank <laughs> you for bringing all of My these pleasure. ideas. My pleasure. Thank you for having me here as a guest. This is a little tip for the thread artists. You like to burn miles and miles of thread into the fabrics that you have and use all kinds of threads that require special treatment sometimes. Your machine is probably set up to carry two normal size threads, so if you increase the size of the top thread, you need to decrease the size of the bottom one, or you need to use a silicone or a thread lubricator so that you can slick down that thread and it'll run side by side the other one easier. This is a lubricator. It attaches to your machine with a magnet. And if we open it up, you'll see there's two felt pads in there where the thread will pass over these once they've been soaked with the silicone, and it'll wet them down and make them a little slicker to run. Here's another kind of a thread lubricator. This one has a bracket. The bracket can fit under something that's already on your machine, something that's screwed down a different thread guide or spool holder. And then this lubricator can, it does have a magnet if you want, sit on the pin and be turned different directions in order to accommodate how it's put on the machine. This one opens up. The thread pad is in here and it has the thread guides to guide the thread through and you can leave some silicone in the dispenser at the top. I like to use as clear a silicone as possible and um, don't leave your thread in there overnight because it'll soak back up the thread and down to the cone. So that's a little tip to help you run those specialty threads. Thanks for watching this episode of Quilt Central, number 201, Wedding Bells. Be sure to join us next time for Coochie Coo, quilting for the babies in our lives. Quilt Around the Clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program.
Central is made possible in part by Bernina of America. Nothing sews like a Bernina. Nothing. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. American Professional Quilting Systems, hand-guided elegance. The American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Paducah, McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Paducah, where no one is a stranger. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call 1-866-PADUCA.